Good to see you. You declare yourself a winner last night or not? Well, I thought I did well, mm. um, but I also thought that the debate was a bit more lively, um, and I think probably the um, the audience would have enjoyed it. The Labour leader took some smelling salt. She was there for the um, for the fight as well. Yeah, I thought that um, there was a bit more energy yeah. um, last night, um, but you know, I thought I did well, and certainly, um, yeah, my phone was buzzing all night with people. Um, thinking, you know, I did well, so I think, you know, it's good. Was there some policy on the hoof? Some policy on the hoof? Well, you do have to sometimes make up a, a, so, you know, so what, make did a decision. So did we get some inquiries? Well, we actually, yeah, we, we got an inquiry into Pharmac. Um, both sides agreed to that, and I think there's no problem with that. With um, a view to what, though? I, I think with, really with a view to making sure that, um, that people understand what the processes are that Pharmac goes through, but also making sure that Pharmac is held to account like every other government agency um, and that they are doing the right things with the right money that they've got. Do you they need more money? That, well, of course they do, but yeah. that's that's why I'm asking the question. Mm. I mean, fundamentally, I mean, they've got about, if you've got $100, you've got $100, and those are the decisions they ha- have to make. So you either give them more or you, you upend the structure. Yeah, I don't think you want to upend the structure because the last thing I think we want to do is to uh, take away a bulk buying situation um, when you're dealing with big pharmaceuticals. Um, so, But I think too is that sometimes Pharmac does need a bit of a move along as it did when, with Herceptin, uh, which I don't know if you remember in 2008 yes, we uh, we said from opposition that Eastern, we would actually fund Herceptin. There, I think that was probably the first time uh, party had done something like that. Is there too much politics to involved in that then, in the, in the sense that they, they, I mean you can't say they're political, can you? Or are you? No, I, no but um, I think sometimes is it is always important just to always review anyway. I don't have a problem with that. But I'd also say too, maybe there's some other, other things we could do around more generic drugs or whatever. But I think you know nothing wrong with a review to check things are going right. And if they're not going right, what do they need? And it may just be more money. All right. You seem to introduce potentially a new law somehow to claw back money on the wage subsidy. How does that work? Yeah, that's that That was a big call, I thought. Um, but, uh, did, did you know you were going to make it? <laughs> well, I didn't know I was going to get that question. But I think it is important, though, to find out that, um, you know, the, obviously, and Jacinda Ardern sort of said last night, uh, she says these companies are played by the rules. The trouble is the rules were pathetic and they just let people go waltzing through them. But there is a moral right, um, moral duty of people if they've taken all that money. And, you know, our kids and grandkids are going to be paying it back and they don't need it. They should have given it back. They shouldn't do it. But morals isn't law. And no, it gonna, isn't. You're going to have to have the law. Yeah, I know. And how, how's your law going to work and who are you going to visit and how are they going to pay it back? Well, I think first off, you know, I, I do the phone call maybe. Um, and <laughs> that starts. But the other thing is... Um, have a look at, at the system and see where it was. Did anyone break that those rules? And also, I think, you know, if they've got a situation where they didn't need it, they, they had yeah, no but need what, to. But how do you determine need it? Because, I mean, I'm a, I'm a fan of it to the extent that it was to yeah. save jobs, right? Yeah. So companies don't equate profit necessarily with jobs. So in other words, if you got hit by 40%, Mm. Uh, and you go, and you didn't have a wage subsidy. What would you have done? You would have laid people off. Mm. You still could have made a profit by laying people off, but you would have lost the jobs. The government rule was simply, we want to keep the jobs. They kept mm. the jobs, so therefore it was successful in that sense, wasn't it? Yeah, in some cases they kept the jobs just for the term of the wage subsidy, and then they sacked them. Right. So is um, that what the law so, is going to say? Because this yeah. is the complexity of the law. Yeah, that's the trouble. And so that would be a very difficult one. But you know what? I reckon we could do it. It's amazing what you can do when you've uh, got the power of uh, government, you've got mm. enough numbers. But I, it's not ideal. Retrospective is never ideal. But I tell you what, uh, nor is the fact that a whole lot of people are now going to have to pay back for that uh, that largesse that uh, Labor had. Some of your policy that makes sense, so you uh, want more people coming to the country, more visas, more money, yep. more jobs, etc. What you're up against in the campaign, as far as I can work out, and in, in, in from people, is fear. Yeah. Are people, and do you see that fear that says, as logical as your policy may be, mm. they're not up for it, they're not ready for it, and they don't like it? Yeah, I think you are absolutely on the money there. So what we've got is um, absolute fear being spread around the place, and we've got people giving, being told, all these people are dying everywhere, never talking about um, people who die of other diseases anyway, um, such as you know winter flus or whatever. But um, there is an absolute fear that's been bred in, and it's very quickly come in. So, yeah, we could give in to that fear or else we could have a principled approach to it, which is 
do you really want to think that this country is going to close its borders and go in and out of lockdown every five minutes because somebody doesn't get tested at the border and they let them through? Mm. But there is a way to bring people through. And at first off, it's testing, it's COVID mm. apps, it's all those things. But other jurisdictions and countries can do it. So how come we can't? Taiwan, 23 million people. You know, a jurisdiction that's got, what, 23 million people right next door to mainland China. Yep. And guess what? Same number of deaths as we have, actually. And they've never once had a lockdown because they've used technology. They've been smart. They've been planned. They've planned it. And they haven't had multiple agencies all running around and they didn't give their health minister off for two two months in Dunedin yeah. on holiday. So, so, you know? so are you, are you up, could you lose the election on fear, though, potentially? Well, I think that's certainly what the Labour Party's hoping. I mean, you know, you, you heard Miss Ardern sort of say multiple times over the last few months, oh, it's a COVID election, you know, we don't need policy because it's all about COVID. She's, you know, got that. You, you could, but you know what? Um, you also got to... Gotta, be truthful about it. Are you really going to keep New Zealand locked down forever? Yeah. And the answer is you shouldn't have to have a lockdown if you put the technology in place and you test people before they get on a plane. And you know, I said last night on the debate that little Samoa hasn't had any COVID. They closed their borders in February. But also, if you want to go there, you've got to get tested negative before you get on a plane. Last night, we got a message through. The Labour Party was fact-checking it. <laughs> Guess what? Yeah, I'm right. They're wrong. I mean, for goodness sake, if Samoa can do it, how come New Zealand yeah. isn't organised? So as far as the tax cuts are concerned, there was a poll out last mm. night. It doesn't seem the pen. This goes to fear, I suppose, as mm. well. It, it, it doesn't seem that people are embracing that concept as much as you, I'm assuming, mm. might have hoped. Well, I, I think it's just that people are fearful. They think, oh, gosh, well, if I have my money... Um, you know, maybe maybe the government needs my money. Tell you what, these guys, they just go and borrow more anyway. Mm. They're already borrowing. They're planning up about $200 billion worth of borrowing as part of their plan. Um, and by the way, even then, they can't even give me a fiscal plan to show me how they'd actually do it. Are you, as far as um, Seymour, and I mean, was that made up last night as well? No, I've said that the before. Deputy? I've said that before because I've, I've been asked it before and I've said, look, I've got no problem with David Seymour in that position. I tell you what, David Seymour, and you know, obviously I prefer everyone to give their party vote to national. Thank you very much because I want more national MPs. Um, but David Seymour is a principled person in my experience and he and I have worked together before and I actually admire people who have principle and... Um, you know, we'd always agree on everything, but I tell you what, I'd rather have him any day than uh, what Miss Ardern's had. So what we've had in the polls is that the gap between... I look at centre-right, centre-left, right? Mm. It's blocks. That's how MNP yep. works, rightly or wrongly. So the centre-right block is closing the gap. So mm -hmm. it was 10, it's now 6, and you've got two weeks to go. That's right. On the night, what's your call? Where do you reckon you will land on the night? I reckon it'll be close as anything, Mike. Mm. And um, I tell you what, um, every day that goes on, it's getting better, and I can feel that there's a momentum. So, you know, I'm out and about all the time, like every day. I'm up in Kerry Kerry today, for instance, and I get hugely good feedback and people feeling positive and enthusiastic. And so one of the things with those debates is if we, as the leaders, perform well, the enthusiasm comes from our supporters who then go out and talk about how people should vote for mm. national. But, um, you know, that's what I'm feeling very much. And also people know whether or not you know your stuff. That's that's helpful. Okay. Experience counts. Highlight of the campaign still to come Monday morning mm. at 7 o'clock. Yes, that's uh, right. For, yeah. for two two hours yeah. on on this show. And it, it'll, well, it'll be make or break, Judith, so we'll see. <laughs> I know. I'm looking forward to it, mind you. I'll better go and do some SWAT on Sunday. <laughs> Good idea. Nice to see you. <laughs> 14 you, minutes away from eight.